Hey guys, so I've been getting a lot of requests to kind of give you guys my first um, impression, my first, my, my thoughts basically on the new Final Cut Pro X uh, that just actually came out. See, it's the Final Cut Pro X. Uh, fancy. And I was just kind of goofing around on here. Just I'm still learning. Uh, that's why this is not really a review uh, per se or kind of a how-to. It's just more of something I've discovered. The first thing when you see it, uh, when you open up Final Cut uh, Pro X, is that it's completely different. Well, by completely different, I mean it's black and it's sleek and it's much cooler. It's actually better on the eyes. It's not not as bright, so I actually kind of like that a lot. And then the little viewer, the finder or whatever you want to call it, right over here, the left side, um, it's a lot different too, as you can see. Um, I actually like it a lot because, like, when you import files, let's say, let's, say, let's do some quick importing right now, some vlog, previous vlog. So let's just grab some files right here and hit import. Um, you can see actual thumbnails this time and versus like you would have to click on it and then bring it into the uh, the viewer and go through it. This is a lot nicer. I actually like this a lot. And uh, with doing like, sorry, I gotta get, I gotta get comfortable if I'm gonna be talking for a while. No, if I actually gotta do like vlogs and stuff, there's a lot of in and out points that you have to do. Um, so I just do I, O, drag it over to the canvas and throw it in there. What's really cool here is that these, if you look right below, I don't know if I can zoom this in, see if it works, there's these buttons right here with shortcuts. Uh, for example, the W1 puts in between clips and then the E button um, actually puts at the end of the clip. This whole section is gonna take some getting used to, like this little yellow bar, it's, that's like very reminiscent of the new iMovie 08. I actually never used a 2008 iMovie just because uh, I was already using, you know, Final Cut. I was like, oh, why, am I, why would I use it? Plus, it felt a little clunky. Hit space to play. Like it. Hit the oh, I God. button for the in point, right? So let's do right here. Uh, it's a little pyro. Okay. Wow. It's gonna get really sweaty, buddy. A little more sweaty. <laughs> okay, and then we'll just hit the O for the out point. Two ways of doing this. You can either click it and drag it down to your timeline, like so. I was just undo that. Or simply hit the E button. And you can just keep hitting E, blah, 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 blah. And it puts it all there uh, on the timeline one after another. So, do another in point, hit a more uh, <laughs> space to play, out point, and then hit E. And let's go to this one, in point. He's spoofing. Any guesses? Any? Out point, E. So it just keeps doing that, and you can keep going and doing that for all the clips you need. So it's actually a lot faster than the other one. The only thing that's kind of weird is not as precise. I'm used to using the arrows to go back and make sure to get it really precise. Um, so it's going to take some getting used to, but I do like it. So for example, let's say we want to this clip, and if we hit E, it's just going to put it at the end, right? Let's say you want it in the middle. So we just put the cursor right here, and then just hit W, and it throws it right in the middle. And, okay, so a lot of people have been talking about this, um, which is really, really cool. It's called Ripple... Bleh, 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 bleh. It's called Ripple Delete. One thing about the new Final Cut Pro X is that it's uh, magnetic. So... Um, just like magnets, they're always, you know, wanting to be close to each other. Just love. They're, they're, they're in love. Magnets are always in love. You would have to do a ripple delete because if you were to delete, we're going to delete this middle clip, right? If I was to do that, it would leave this big gaping hole right there, right? Um, and then you would have to do a ripple delete and bring it together. If I do it now, just hit delete, comes together automatically. So you can do that with multiple clips. You can go here and here, brings them all together, which is really... Uh, nice because that would take a long time you have to move layers over and it, it's a pain in the butt so that's really nice the other cool thing I want to show you really quickly is the um, it's called like key, key tracking or key framing for example if you want to put something on the, the, the screen to move it around you would have to do this and hit buttons manually and do it all like manually right I don't want to say it's automatic but it is pretty quickly uh, quick yeah, here. So by the way there's a whole bunch of stuff uh, now in here that wasn't in Final Cut 7, and it's actually kind of nice. So let's just throw a shape above right here, okay? You can click this little area. It's the same thing as the Final Cut, you know, the transform effect. You can click it, and you can make it smaller. Um, let's just, for the sake, uh, I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I just wanna show you how you can move stuff around on the screen now. And if you look up here at the top, let's see if I can do this. Oh my God, it's really zoomed in. Uh, this diamond plus, uh, plus sign? Diamond plus, plus diamond, I don't know. I always think DDP, anyone Anyone out there? You click it, and it's automatically gonna do this. So you just click it once, hit the space bar to play, you off the balcony, and it, you was, right here you want it to move over to here. 
Okay? It's, you don't have to do anything else. It's already going to do it. And then Which play it again. That's a fire. I'm going to move it down here. Play again. And then over here. So let's just go back and play that really quickly just to show you um, how it's going to do it automatically. See? It's kind of cool. Um, obviously, there's a million and one things, uses you can do this. You can like blur people's faces. You can have little flying, whatever you want to do. So let's just do a little in and out point. Uh, drag it over, hit E. And then, okay, things that you're going to need to know that it took me a while to figure out, because a lot of things are kind of hidden, and that's what kind of sucks, is that it seems to be all here, but it's all in different places that you're usually, you know, for Final Cuts, seven Final Cuts, you know, you knew where everything was. Apple's like, oh, remember this? Nope, it's gone now. But it's not really gone, it's just hidden. We go to Show Inspector. Um, or you can do Command 4 and it'll show up on the right side. On the ca canvas, the middle the window on final, the other Final Cuts, if you would go up to the top, you can basically it's like going to the back of the video where it gives you all the properties where you can crop, you can do the drop shadows. That's what that is right now. Uh, that's where that goes. Let's just click it and then you can see all the stuff on the right hand side. The cropping, let's just say I want to crop it to the left a little bit. You know, it's all there. That's where that all went. Uh, trust me, that took me a while to figure out. It was like, where is it? They couldn't have gotten away, from, uh, you know, gotten rid of that. The keyer is kind of goofy. You want to go right here, go to keying, drag it over, um, click it, and then you'll see on the right side, on the inspector, there's the uh, the effects under the keyer, right? What's weird is how it does it. So it automatically seems to pick the green, um, and I'm assuming it'll pick a blue. But if you go to the composite button, it'll take it away, and then you go to sample color. And you gotta get rid of the transform thing. And then you color, you know, select the colors. You know, this is really bad lighting just because, you know, I wasn't, you know, planning on doing anything with this. And then you hit sample color right there, and then color, blah, blah, blah. And then hit the composite. It takes it away. So that's good, but then if you look at the right hand side, like right here, this area, it's like garbage, right? I can't seem to figure out how to make it look nicer. There's this edge tool right here where you go back to the original and then you can kind of feather through stuff. I mean, it's weird. Like, I, I'm not going to say it's worse. It actually might be better once I get used to it. There's like a lot of cool text and titles. Do this and throw it over here and it goes right there. And then you have a cool little title. Oh my God. It's like I have talent with graphics and stuff. <laughs> Is it worth it? I, I don't know. Um, I, like I said, I've only been playing with it for a day. Um, Things I like, uh, especially are the rendering thing. For example, I, I guess I didn't show you guys this. So let's go to a clip, right? Let's just drag one of the the, the, the effects they have. Let's say 50s TV. It'll automatically do it. Hit play, and it's gonna const it's gonna play, right? You don't even have to render. Um, so that alone is phenomenal. And you can see in the background, it's rendering. Uh, you can click on it, and you can see the background tasks. That alone is so worth it. Um, that is so worth it to me. Um, there's there's some things in here that I'm still gonna have to get used to. Don't know where everything is. I don't even I don't even feel comfortable using it yet um, as my main editing program, just because I think I'm going to be so much slower. But I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go back and forth between the two. Three hundred dollars is incredible. Um, that's a really good price. It's still a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, but con compared to the, what was it, $1,200, $1,000, or whatever it was. I'm gonna keep messing with it. I'm sure as I'm vlog, uh, editing the vlogs and stuff like that, you guys are gonna notice uh, me using it a little bit more. Um, as you can tell too, right here, as it's rendering, the little orange goes away. For those people who probably used iMovie um, before, probably not gonna have that much of a problem. So as you can see, this is the old Final Cut 7 right here. And uh, it's, it's, after going between the two, like if you go back and forth, like, your eyes feel a lot more relaxed here, and then when they're here, it's like, ah, the light! You feel like a vampire. Um, and it does seem a lot nicer looking, you know, typical Apple-esque um, appeal to it. But, I mean, it's, this is what I was talking about right here on the left-hand side. This is how it used to be. And then right now, this is how, where is it, how it is, where you can actually see the stuff and play through it. So, um, would I recommend it? Yeah. Uh, I think they'll make this pretty solid, and um, yeah, I hope you guys like it. Let me know. As I learn more of these things and where more little hidden features are, um, I'll, I'll maybe make more videos like this, and if you guys like it. Sorry it's so long, but I guess it's a lot of information, and I tend to ramble when I try to explain things. Uh, especially gadget oriented because I get so excited. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel as well as my other channels which I'll put all in the video description 
and I will see you guys later.